Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Graham. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. And I got sent a fantastic clip by Scott Walker. Big shout out to Scott Walker, who put me onto this. <laughs> and then I couldn't go to bed until I streamed it. That's, that, that's the truth of the matter right there. It's it's that kind of good. It's you know it's the thirty six D guy a guy rolls in in a bathrobe <laughs> after like yesterday with, with the with the whole Karen in bed routine. I, I I couldn't take it. I I it's too much fun. Let let's do it, shall we? Miss Matthews, you cannot lay down while you're in court. <laughs> My case don't come up to ten thirty, so I'm still on. I'm still on camera. Or... You can either you can cut your camera off. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was trying to do. Okay. Yeah, there's a thought. And great morning. All right. Okay. I am Judge Lanice Bryant. Welcome to the Thirty Six District Court. You are at the Thirty Six District Court. You are at Thirty Six District Court. You are at 36 District Court. Where are we, Judge? Court. You are at 36 <laughs> District Court. There he is, our hero. <laughs> just guess just guess by her expression how this is going to go. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Adams. Do you uh, do you have on a bathrobe? Because when we brought you in earlier, you were sleeping. Your head was down on the table. You were asleep, and now you have on a bathrobe. So I need you to go get dressed for court, and then I'm gonna bring you back out later. Meanwhile, I'll bring these other people in. I believe. I guess Sean is is probably Mr. Carruthers. <laughs> And he sleep again. I'm not going to do <laughs> what? It's not. It's not. Mm -mm. This he need to go to bed. Do you all know Mr. Adams' phone number? Because I he waking up enough to see that he get keep getting kicked out. Text him again, Judge. Yes. I mean, what is what is going? <laughs> Okay. He's back. Your Honor, the clerk is on the phone next door. So I could keep calling back. Yeah, or just go, get up and go over there and ask her. Okay, I'll go over there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Adams, sit up straight. Sit up straight and stop being asleep when I bring you into this courtroom. Now, that I, I have brought you in here, then I keep removing you because your head is laying down as if you're not coming to court. You are coming to court. You are at court. Listen, stop talking. Yeah, stop talking and do a lot of listening right now. You are at court. It is inappropriate for you to come to court like this. That's inappropriate. I'm going to send you to the breakout room so that you can speak to the lawyers when you come out of the breakout room or out of the waiting room. I do not want to see you laying down on that table. I do not. I need you to be sitting up in an upright position, ready to attend court, ready to attend court. On behalf of Mr. Jalen Adams, and prior to his entering his appearance, Your Honor, we would apologize to the court, and Mr. Adams will too. Mr. We usually, uh, we always send out a um, reminder with some final instructions about court appearance. Mr. Adams uh, had a telephone number change in the interim, so he didn't get our message. He apologizes for his the mm -hmm. quorum earlier, and I believe he's made the necessary adjustment, Your Honor. Mr. Adams, please tell the judge your full name. Unmute yourself first, Mr. Adams. Unmute. Mm -mm. You're still muted. My name is Jalen Pierre Adams. Today is the day set for a pretrial conference. Um, how are we proceeding? If I tell you I don't think there's a complaining witness, is that going to change what you say? No, Your Honor. No. Oh, okay. um, 
Mr. Adams will continue his plea of not guilty. We're going to ask that this matter be set for final pretrial conference. We would re dis request discovery, and we would like to be heard as to bond, Your Honor. All right. The court is going to continue a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Adams. I will set a final pretrial conference for July the 27th at 9 o'clock a.m. Discovery should be submitted to the defense by June 27th and asked to bond. Your Honor, uh, Mr. 727. Your Honor, there was a GPS tether and a curfew ordered at the time of the arraignment along with a personal bond. Um, we have not been made aware of any tether violations whatsoever, Your Honor. Mr. Adams absolutely understood the magistrate's order that he should have no contact with the complaining witness, and he has had no contact with that individual, Your Honor. In fact, um, Mr. Adams has advised us that um, that the necessary witness, I'm going to correct myself in this matter, would have... Um, I know you guys are all wondering right now. He's charged with uh, harboring a teenage, uh, a runaway. Did make an attempt to contact Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams did not answer that phone call. So I am asking at this time that the tether be removed. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that's a necessary witness. It, yeah, I, as soon as I said that, I, I heard right. you. As soon as that came out of my mouth, but I'm like, let me just go with it and see what happens. Right. Yeah, because the necessary witness is the person they ran away from. Okay, and, well, at that, so so that individual as well tried to contact Mr. Adams, and he didn't respond okay. to that to that call. Okay, so yeah, I, I in my mind, I see two necessary witnesses: the police or whoever got the person from Mr. Adams. And the person who says that the person was legally supposed to be in their custody and then they ran away. But nonetheless, Ms. Ritter just sent a message to your witnesses to let them know that they cannot contact Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams definitely cannot contact them. Um, may yeah, you may. Go ahead. I'm sorry, the doctor was going to ask if the people could respond. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Judge, in this case, um, Reading from the investigator's report, it looks like the alleged runaway individual is a minor. Um, they are 14 years old. And at the time, um, the police were investigating a missing persons from the legal guardians of the minor. Um, they did check the location where Mr. Adams was. And um, it's alleged that Mr. Adams denied um, having contact with this individual. And it was later found out that this individual was at Mr. Adams' home. Again, Judge, she's a minor. I believe Mr. Adams is over the age of 18 years old. So at this time, Judge, I'm going to ask the court to um, deny defense counsel's motion to remove the GPS tether based on those facts from this case, Your Honor. Yeah, I, so I was trying to process it. And um, Ms. Stevenson, did you have a response? Yes, Your Honor. So the GPS tether restricts the movement of Mr. Adams. I don't know how the GPS would, the GPS tether, um, as opposed to the court's no contact condition, would ensure that Mr. Adams has no contact with that complainant. So um, it, again, at this point, the tether has been on since the time of arraignment, which I think was March 3rd, Your Honor, we're going on two months later, and there have been, to my knowledge, no violations of the GPS tether. Mr. Adams um, has uh, been completely cooperative with tether, tether agents, Your Honor. We don't have any indication of any violation. Uh, I think at this point, I would argue at this point that the court's stringent no contact condition, Mr. Adams already has more trouble than he uh, envisioned by this case coming about in the first place. And he doesn't want any more trouble with anybody. Um, the, the reason that he was laying his head down, Your Honor, at, when the court called the case is because he's indicated to me he hasn't had any sleep in the last 48 hours worrying about this case. Mr. Adams just turned 21 years old today. Um, he's not trying to have any problems in his life. I believe he will abide by this court's no contact condition, and we would ask that the GPS tether be removed. I don't know of any violations, Your Honor. And again, um, well, that's our argument. Is he on house arrest? He's on a curfew and a GPS tether. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. curfew. 
and a dance, which doesn't, I don't know if that's correct, but that's what my note says, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. <clears throat> and we'd have no objection to a, a, a night curfew. <clears throat> yeah, so let me tell you why I think it's important. And maybe you're correct. I don't know. Of course, Mr. Adams is innocent until proven guilty. Um, but let me tell you why I think a GPS tether might be helpful. Because if they, if there's a tracker or if there's some type of situation where the person goes missing again, I, first of all, I think it could help Mr. Adams. Sometimes trackers help us even though they're inconvenient. The police will go right to Mr. Adams and say, this person is missing again. And then Mr. Adams will be able to prove that the person is not with him or, you know, whatever. However, this is, this is really a serious situation because um, it's, it's very serious. And if he did it, of course, you know, at this moment, I guess he's the only one that knows for sure that's on this one. But that was horrible because if the parents are looking for the child, I can't imagine if my child go missing and I'm looking for the child then, you know, it's so much that could have happened to the child and then you know where the child is <laughs> and you won't tell me, you won't let me know that they're safe. Um, and so, you know, he finds himself in a world of trouble. Additionally, I know he probably maybe I don't know how he knows the child, <laughs> but he put him. Excuse me. So he's twenty one, and the minor's fourteen. He put him on his himself in a situation where he could be accused of a whole bunch of stuff. Oh yeah. That could cause a whole bunch of extra big, right now. big, big problems. So perhaps in this moment, the GPS tether is is good for Mr. Adams. Now, what I will do, so I'm not comfortable at this moment, at right at this moment. I'm not comfortable removing the tether at this moment. I may become comfortable, but in the future, I will change his curfew to 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. This ends up being funny. To 11 p.m. So he can be out and about. He has to be home at 5 a.m. So let me make that. Let me change okay. it. Okay. Okay. It should be backwards. It should be 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. So 11 p.m. he All has right. to be home. And then 5 a.m. Um, so from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. And then I don't know the address of where the minor child lives, uh, but that address is in the is is in the exclusions. Or I want that address in the exclusion zone. Unless so, do they live near each other or anything like that? Not at all, Your Honor. Okay. Different. Um, uh, I want to say different county. Okay. What? Well, okay. So then the the address is in the exclusion zone, and Mr. Adams cannot be within 500 feet of the address of the minor child person. Um. You cannot be. You cannot be near the person. Period. You cannot have any contact with this person and um yeah and, and that means by phone call or by text message by letter anything you cannot be in contact and then miss miss ritter as i indicated please contact the witnesses let them know they can't talk to mr adams any questions they might have so I'm speaking more like of the guardian. I don't know why they would be calling Mr. Adams, but if they have any questions, they need to contact you. Um, Mr. Martell, you giving me Gary Jones vibes right now. 
Oh, God rest his soul. <laughs> You're walking around and stuff on that camera. Um, okay, so I'm not going to remove the tether, but I'll. I don't even know what she means by Gary Jones vibes. You, you, you guys can fill me in on the reference. <laughs> Change the curfew from 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. I mean, sorry, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. Okay. So that's only six hours. It seems like judges on cold medicine herself. I mean, she's fine, but she's a little a little spaced out. <laughs> Maybe he rubbed off on her. I don't know. Hours that he's restricted to his home. We get there. Don't worry. <laughs> and then if he still has no tether violations or any contact violations, uh, at the July 27th court date, then I will reconsider the motion. Okay. All right. Anything further? Judge, would the court like for me to send the look or the address of the individual for exclusionary zone purposes? Yes. And, and then let's please make sure that i don't know mr i don't know how mr adams may know this person but of course let's just make sure that that exclusionary zone is not in the system like let's keep it private it's only going to go to the tether unit understood judge nothing further from the people all right anything further here we go um nothing on behalf he wants to talk of Mr. Adams. Mr. Adams Thank did you. you raise your hand just now? Okay. Thank what you. Is it? Yes, I had a question. Can I speak? Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you if it's a if if it's not a appropriate question for me, I'm going to cut you off and send you to the breakout room with Miss Stevenson. Okay, it was just about my curfew time. Okay. Okay. So, what time is my curfew time? Because I know it was eight to eight. Right. So no. So now you can be out until 11 p.m. And then you can't go out again until 5 a.m. in the morning. OK, so from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m., you have to be at home. So between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., I have to be at home. <laughs> no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> between 11 p.m., 11 at night at night. So when when 11 o'clock at night come, you have to be home. And then you can't leave your house again until five o'clock in the morning. Yes, ma'am. You will probably yes, be Honor. asleep, though. You're going to be asleep. Do you work, Mr. Adams? Yes, ma'am. What time do you have to be at work? I have to be at work early in the morning because I work at the hospital because I start next week. So what time do you have? What's of course, he's starting a new job. And she says, do you work? Yes. What time do you work? Early in the morning. Uh, like, OK, so you don't work. <laughs> oh, what's early? Good. So I have to be there maybe lying around like nine or ten. OK, so that curfew, you you, you can be at the hospital. So you can at five o'clock in the morning, you can you can leave the house at, after five o'clock in the morning. You could be gone all day, and when ten fifty nine come, you need to be walking up your stairs because eleven o'clock that curfew hits. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Anything further? Nothing on behalf of Mr. Adams. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Adams, you're all set until July twenty seventh, and then if you don't have any curfew, if you don't have any curfew violations, if you don't have any tether violations, if you haven't had any contact. With the witnesses, then I'll re I'm, I'll reconsider the motion. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Have a great day. Stay safe. You too, ma'am. Thank you. Oh my gosh! It is a double rainbow. I cannot believe it. It's a freaking double rainbow. Well, there you have it. I thought I thought it was just too good. All all the fun parts in the beginning, although the the last part was good. Like, you know, she did confuse the issue about the curfew. She she meant to make a curfew from eleven p.m. to five a.m. and she said it backwards to begin with. And then and then his question is like, wait, my curfew was eight to eight. Has it been changed? They discussed it for ten minutes straight. <laughs>
<laughs> and then she gives it to him and he says, okay, okay, my curfew is from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. No, knucklehead. <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Which just made me think he's still not awake. Oh, good lord! But the, but but the beginning was good with him him rolling in in a robe, especially after yesterday and the and the whole bed thing. They really, she really should, uh, she really should have have these people as a bond condition. Watch La Talk with watch her playlist on La Talk with Mike. <laughs> It would avoid a lot of problems. It would avoid a lot of problems. Here's how you get on Judge's bad side, you know? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Speaking of which, I was going to mention that. This this is, again, from uh, from Covert Design. He sent me a whole party box of cool stuff. I've got more stuff that's going to come out, but I, I thought this one was nice for tonight. I like this. This This is comfy. This is nice. It fits good too. I'm digging it. So, all right, there you have it. I just thought I'd squeeze this one in late night. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. It, it was too. It was too good not to do. I will see you soon. <laughs>